Victor, give us a uh, give us a first quarter grade on your quarterback. <laughs> well, Coach Smith actually actually has the position coaches do first quarter grades on on all the players, and uh, I mean obviously that probably should be kept in between uh, the coaches and the players, but um, not not good enough. You know, Dan's not not good enough, and. Uh, we, we're going to have some growing pains, and we, we certainly had some last week. The easy thing to say about interceptions is, like you said, is you know, bad decision, right? Um, so, how many? How much is it a bad decision? Mechanics play into that. When you look at what he's done, I mean, the, coming in, the fear was he's going to go for too much. He's not going to check the ball down. He likes to get it down the field. How much of it is just his nature of, of, of the way he likes to play the game? Some. Yeah. Some. I mean, unfortunately, when you have four interceptions, there's a lot of explaining to do. You know, it's different than if you throw one interception. Uh, so we had four interceptions. I mean, it's a fact. We had four. Two, two bad decisions, one tip ball, and one great play. Uh, that's, that's what I wrote on my sheet. Two bad decisions, one, one tip ball, one great play. Does he see the underneath coverage well enough and, and avoiding that? Or is it I shouldn't say avoiding, but is he seeing that well enough? Because it seems like a lot of those picks are just someone that, that's between him and the receiver, and he's maybe not seeing it. Are you seeing that as well? Part I mean, of the when we use words like a lot, uh, you know, there's how many turnovers are too many? Two, you know, one turnover is too many. So uh, every interception, any any turnover has a has a reason tag to it. And uh, you know, Jameis throws hundreds of passes every day, and. Uh, we had four interceptions. We've already established that. So, you know, to you know, everybody's going to start saying he does this, he does this, he does this. Jameis is good enough. He wasn't good enough on Sunday. Uh, offensively, we weren't good enough. We were good enough in some areas, but we can't we can't spot another team that far and try to catch up. That's that's on our offense. So, I just would say be cautious about. Everybody wants to put tags on a lot. That word, a lot. A lot of this, a lot of this. Trust me, I watch a lot of film. <laughs> I watch a lot of film. So, uh, can't turn the ball over. Plain and simple. I mean, no, it doesn't. My wife told me that when I went home. Hey, you guys got to quit turning it over. <laughs> I, mean, I know. We got to quit turning it over. There's reasons for turnovers, some more easily fixable than others. Are you seeing progress from what he was in college as a quarterback? Again, in terms of the interceptions more than anything at this point, are you seeing progress? Is, is he better now at, at reading coverages and making the right decisions, or is yeah. he still kind of where he was when he came out? No, that's, that's a hard question because, you're, when, again, you're saying when he was in college. I mean, playing in college is not playing in the NFL. It's just a, a different, different animals. And <coughs> did we throw too many interceptions in this game? Yes. All right, can we base the whole rest of James's career on that? No, we can't. I mean, it was... It's bad. It's unfortunate. Uh, you know, today's Wednesday. I mean, I had my 24 hours of mourning, and I believe me, it's not mourning. But you know, we got to move on. I mean, we got to we got to learn our lessons, and we have to move on. We can't let last week beat us this week. Okay, so let's move on. Where where is he making progress? Where are you starting to see some positives that this is he's taking steps forward in this area, yeah. that area? Uh, well. He, you know, we, we had our best day on third down. Our first, our first day over 50% on third down. Our first day over 55% in the red zone. Three out of five. Three out of five touchdowns in the red zone. Uh, we, we are, we are making progress. Unfortunately, turnovers wipes everything else out. You know, if it would have been a, a no turnover, 17 to 16 game, we'd be talking about other stuff. But turnovers change the game. Fumble snap. Uh, a fumble snap, a pick six interception. We're down ten nothing, just like that, and the whole game, the whole game has changed. Now, unfortunately, that's happened two out of four games. In between that, Jameis played two pretty good games: uh, a win at New Orleans, and he played pretty, he played uh, pretty decent at Houston. So that's what could, what can we learn from that? Our quarterback's playing inconsistent. All right, well. We have a rookie quarterback, and he's playing inconsistent. What's what's the next news flash? We're going to see. That's, that's where we're at. Uh, when you draft a guy and you start playing him from day one, uh, is, is it acceptable? No. Uh, does it, does anyone have to tell Jameis? No. I've, 
told you before, James does see the field well. That's one of his strengths. He does see the field well. Uh, can we just we have to get off to a better start? I have to help him get off to a better start, and uh, I think things will be fine. Uh, other than that, but that was when we unfortunately went down that way on Sunday. But we have to, you know, we have to we have to own it. It happens. Dirk, how do you do that? I mean, you're third and eight. You know, there's only so many calls you can make, right? Right. Um, but you know, we also saw games where. You know, he came up here and said we were 18 and three, run to the throws on yeah. first and second down. I mean, do you have to kind of like reel things back a little bit? Or? Well, uh, you know, at the same time, even though we have to help Jameis get off to a better start, we also have to give our team the best the best chance to win. And we said in the Houston game, Houston was gonna was gonna shut our run day, yeah. game down, was playing us all in, in single high coverage. Now that's not what happened in Carolina. Carolina played played a lot more. Uh, Zone so, coverage, uh, vision reads on the quarterback, and they're they're one of the better teams in the league at doing that. And so we we ran into some different issues, but we're you know we're we're gaining experience for our quarterback. We got some <coughs> other guys playing well at their positions. You know we we uh, are, are are making progress as an offense, but we again we turnovers. We're gonna have the same conversation every week if we turn it over five yeah. times. Dirk, obviously this is a learning process for Jameis, uh, you know, being a rookie. How much is it a learning process for you finding what he does best and kind of tailoring that offense around that? Yeah, I think that I think that is definitely ongoing. Uh, not only what Jameis does best, but what everybody does best. And then, you know, you have your revolving injury situation. Then you also have to factor in what the other team's defense does. You know, we, we played it. I just explained a, a Houston defense different than the Carolina defense, and we're playing a, a, a different animal this week in the Jacksonville defense. So, uh, yeah, that is that is definitely an ongoing process until until we come to until we arrive at this is the Bucks offensive identity, and we're we're, we're not there yet. Uh, hopefully, we get there soon. It has go ahead. Rick. It hasn't been perfect. I mean, but two weeks ago, your offensive line against a pressure defense protected pretty well. Uh, no sacks anyway. Last week I know you had some pressures you wish you didn't have at the wrong times, but you ran the ball extremely well. So are you starting to see from a group, from an offensive line, so you kind of, kind of, kind of know what you're going to get up front? It's getting, you know, the arrows going up a little bit. Yeah, well, I told you a few weeks ago, you know, initially, not only was everybody worried about Jameis, they were also worried about the offensive line. That's right. And we, you know, we said several weeks ago, hey, our whole line is going to be fine. Uh, our two guards played played good football here. This last week, I know we're we're working with our second center, uh, guys playing consistently together on the front. You know, one of on uh, on one of the interceptions was also a pressure. They went a blitz. The running back didn't miss his check, so we had a free runner in the quarterback's face. So we you know we can stand up here and make excuses of why this happened or why that happened, but uh, our offensive line is doing fine. You know, they're uh, they're they're doing fine. We said that from day one. Uh, we takes all 11 guys. We've got to play it all together. Doug's running hard. You know, we had a 100-yard rusher. Uh, Vincent played outstanding. We still need to get Mike. We need to get Mike more involved. That's, you know, that's that's also on the to-do list. But, uh, you know, bottom line, we're going to quit turning the ball over and give ourselves a chance to win. Sure, can you talk about uh, Marquette and, and Donovan Smith? Are they ahead of schedule as far as their progress? Or can you just discuss how they're coming along? Yeah. Uh, Allie, Allie played well again. Uh, Donovan played fine when the game when the game got out of hand you know there towards the end late third fourth quarter they put a speed rusher in there we're having to throw it pretty much no huddle every down tackles on an island uh, that that's going to be that's going to be difficult for for most tackles in the league but those two guys are rookies too let's not forget it and so i would say i would say donovan right on schedule and ali probably ahead of schedule and uh you know, those two guys are going to be good football players for the Bucs for years to come. Dirk, talk a little bit about Doug Martin and just how consistent he's been in terms of the, what we're seeing. I mean, what we saw in OTAs, mm -hmm. we're seeing again in preseason training camp. Now, again, four weeks into the season, still is just. Yep. Exactly, exactly how we practice it. I mean, he comes yeah. to work every day, so he works hard, he finishes plays, uh, knows his assignments, runs really hard, breaking tackles. Yeah. Uh, got got involved a little bit in the passing game. Made a nice play on the screen the other day. They they actually blitzed into it. He bluffed his guy. Made a made a heads up savvy veteran play on that screen. So, Doug's Doug's one of the guys that's uh, playing 
playing winning football. <coughs> How does that help you as a coordinator when you know you've got a guy you can count on him churning out some extra yards after contact the way he is and then just giving you what you want out of a running attack? Sure. Well, that's uh, just like the passing game, just like protection. Everybody's involved in the run game. Uh, the line, the tight ends, our receivers have been blocking a fullback. But it's always great when that running back can make some yards on his own. And Doug's doing it with power and breaking tackles. and. Uh, Sims Charles is doing is doing it too. He's doing it more <coughs> making guys miss, but he's he's just not getting as many touches. But yeah. uh, he's yeah. he's making some plays as well. Dirk, it still Dirk. seems like at, at like Jameis for whatever reason, and maybe he's just comfortable. When you go a little up tempo or at the end of a half situation, he just seems more yeah. in rhythm. Is no, that, he is. No, he is. Is that part of what you're trying to to maybe incorporate? I mean, you can't do yeah. it all the times, but it seems to speed up the whole process. Yeah, Jameis is definitely playing better in no huddle. So. Arby's next question, why aren't you going to know how to more? Uh, Team game. Yeah. Well, just uh, you can't uh, you can't do everything you want to do game plan wise out of no how It's a harder to do some of the things you want to do, uh, especially with this being everybody's first year in the system. But we probably should be doing no how more. I mean, we are, we we are playing better probably in no how than than when we're not. Did you have to go away from it last week just because the defense needed some time on the no. sideline? No. 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 That's uh, no. We uh, we went away from it. Then we came back to it right before the half. Our plan was to go the the entire second half. We kind of got in and out of it, and then in the fourth quarter we were really more in a, in a two minute no huddle instead of a instead of a multiple no huddle for pretty much the whole fourth quarter. Sure. What do you think the same about about Jacksonville's defense? I mean, they made the passing back throw forty five passes. Yeah, they're excellent against the run. They uh, the reason the reason is they they always outnumber you by one. Okay, they're it's the Seattle defense that Coach Bradley brought from Seattle. A single high, eight guys in the box. If you got two backs or two tight ends, seven guys in the box. If you have one back and a tight end, they're always going to have you outnumbered by one. So, in coaching terms, you're always running uphill. You're always looking how do we how do we get a hat for a hat? How do we get leverage? They play with excellent leverage. They play very hard on defense. They're a good tackling defense. So that's that's why they're good against the run. Does that change your game plan at all? Did you want to chuck it up a little bit more and <laughs> allow James to take the reins? Well, that's uh, that's a, that's the big question right now. I mean, that's what we're going to start practicing today is uh, how, figuring out how we can how we can balance all that. But Jacksonville has been played very hard on defense. They're, they're impressive with their run defense. Sir, what about getting off? What, what about getting off to a better start in general? I mean, yep. you're getting off. The numbers are not good in the first quarter. No, it's terrible. The scoreboard. Um, how much do you guys talk about that? You personally, uh, just setting a positive tone for the game. <laughs> well, everybody everybody talks about it, but talking about it and doing it, we, have, we need to do it. Uh, I thought Coach Smith did a great job talking to our team about that, our team in general, last week. And uh, again, get, but going back to that, that nasty turnover word, we could have nine or ten guys playing great but if we turn the ball over that really takes every that takes everybody else out of it we just we turn it over you know we turned over the second play of the game and we turned over uh, that that next interception in the next drive so uh, we talk about fast starts all we want we can't turn the ball over and I think we would start fine if we didn't turn the ball over but we're, you know we have unfortunately so uh, it's just it's not an easy question to answer I mean stop turning the ball over that's how do you how do you stop turning the ball over I mean we cannot go out there and run it 50 straight times if that's what you want me to say we can't do that uh, you know there's just, there's just there's no way that will work it's never worked and it won't work now is there a feeling you're putting the defense in bad positions absolutely I feel like I should apologize for our defense after last week <laughs> Has there been a ripple effect? Questions. Has there been a ripple effect from from the mixed missed field goal attempts and uh, and extra points that affects what you do on offense? Yeah, uh, no. And again, I tell our offensive guys if you don't if you don't want to worry about it, don't put it in the field goal kicker's hands. Finish with touchdowns. That's, that's the way I look at it. I mean, if we score touchdowns, then we don't have to worry about field goals. So uh, again, I got plenty of problems on my own. I, I'm not worried about that. Dirk, what does uh, Dante Adon bring to, to your offense? Well, we're going to find out. I mean, he's a little bit of a, to, to everybody, he's a little bit of an unknown, played small college football. Uh, he's a guy that's worked his way up, made the team, undrafted rookie, uh, worked very hard in practice, flashed 
every day in practice. He makes plays against our defense in practice. He's been elevated. Uh, he's going to get some time, and, and we'll see what see what he can do. I mean, he uh, he's got some juice. He's got some confidence. He's going to be a big week for him playing in his first NFL game. He's got a long way. I'm proud of the guy for. You got to admire what what he's accomplished. It's a good story. We should be talking about that story instead of how many interceptions. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. Uh,